There was a ceremony this past week that celebrated not only the history of Michigan's first governor, Stevens T. Mason, but also the history of Michigan. It was 1837 when the great state of Michigan gained statehood and entered the Union as America's 26th state. And leading Michiganders into the Union was their young governor, Stevens T. Mason. Mason's remains were reinterred in Capitol Park in downtown Detroit this past Wednesday, and although he was not originally from Michigan, he instilled a sense of pride into the hearts and minds of the residents of Michigan's territory. Mason took over as Secretary of Michigan Territory after his father was sent on a mission to Mexico by President Andrew Jackson. But a disagreement with Ohio over the possession of the city of Toledo, thanks to two different land surveys taken, created what would be called the Toledo War, with militia from each state maneuvering to protect their claims. The hard-fought battle by Michigan's young leader ended with President Jackson removing Mason as acting governor replacing him with the unpopular John S. Horner in 1835. Due to financial problems in 1837, Michigan agreed to end the dispute after being offered the Upper Peninsula in return for the Toledo Strip. In January of 1837, Michigan entered the Union and defiantly elected the beloved Stevens T. Mason as their first governor. Mason served as governor of the state of Michigan until 1840. He left in 1841 and tried to start a law practice in New York City, but soon caught pneumonia and died in the winter of 1843 at the age of 31. Originally buried in New York, Mason's remains were brought back to Detroit and laid to rest in Capitol Park in 1905. A statue of Mason was later added and moved again due to city progress in the 1950s. Then in October of 2010, Mason's remains were disinterred to be reburied in Capitol Park. This past week, Michiganders from all over the state witnessed our first governor's interment back at Capitol Park, ironically at a time when Michigan is again struggling as a state. It was a somber occasion as dignitaries, authors, and historical buffs gathered for the final ceremony for America's youngest governor, who is still deserving of an honor guard 170 years after serving the residents of the great state of Michigan. The is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. This has actually been something we've been working on for almost six months now, once we knew that it was going to happen. Um, obviously, when they were restoring the park, they had to dig up the casket and move it. So finding the funeral home that had taken care of it 50 years ago, having them volunteer to take care of it again for us now was marvelous. Um, working with the architect, working with folks to get the um, seal of Michigan that will go across the front, and just finding a lot of interesting people with interesting connections. I think anyone who does Michigan history gets attracted by the boy governor. The idea, you know, we talk about him being 24 when he became governor, but the first time that his father left the territory, his father was an officer in the territorial government, and he took over, he was 19 years old. And so that has always been intriguing that a young man, he makes a wonderful speech to the people of Detroit saying, I will pay attention to my elders, but I can do this. And so I think that's always been fascinating about him. And of course, because there was a struggle for statehood, that this very young man kind of held the state together, held the people together. There were a lot of tough decisions to make about compromises. Um, it wasn't easy to exchange Toledo for the Western Upper Peninsula at that time. And he's the leader that worked the compromise with a lot of other folks to say it's more important to become a state in the end than to fight for Toledo. From Capitol Park in downtown Detroit, I'm Arthur Schink for Shelby This Week.